In this video, I'll demonstrate how to connect your Ledger device to Polkadot.js UI and make a few transactions with it on both Polkadot and Kusama networks. At the time of making this video, Ledger Live app supports basic transactions on Polkadot network like creating new accounts, making balance transfers, and some staking related transactions. If you plan to try out Ledger Live for Polkadot, check out this tutorial linked in the video description. If you're already familiar with Ledger Live, then you'd be aware that it does not expose the full set of functionalities that are possible with the accounts on Polkadot network, right? So here's the list of functionalities the Polkadot app on your Ledger is capable of supporting. Connecting to Polkadot.js UI is going to let you uh, work with these functionalities. And also, you can download Kusama and StateMine apps on your Ledger device, but the Ledger Live app does not support any transactions on those networks yet. To make use of Kusama and StateMine apps installed on your Ledger device, you need to interface them with third-party services like Polkadot.js. If you own a Ledger Nano S, by default, the light versions of these apps get installed, which lack many functionalities. You can opt in to install the Excel version of these apps and the support article uh, shown here is linked in the video description. It shows you how to do it. Ledger Nano X by default installs Excel app. So no action is required if you own a Ledger Nano X. All right, so let's get started and understand how to connect your Ledger device to Polkadot.js UI. This tutorial assumes that you already have both Polkadot and Kusama apps installed on your Ledger device. Through the Ledger Live Manager, ensure all the apps are up to date. Also, make sure you have the Polkadot.js extension installed on your browser. Now, connect your Ledger device to your computer and then open the Polkadot app first and make sure that it is in ready state. Open the extension and click on the plus button right there. Here you'll find an option to attach your Ledger account. If you already use Ledger Live before, these default parameters that you see here will attach the first Polkadot account you may have created on Ledger Live. And this basically imports that account details on to the extension. If you never use Ledger Live, nothing to worry. This would be the account address for the first account created on Ledger Live if you ever plan to use it. Fine. Uh, if you have more than one account on Ledger Live, like me uh, right here, then you'll need to tweak some of these parameters to understand how to attach all of them. All right. Uh, let me demonstrate that for you. Uh, first, let's take note of this address of the account imported on Polkadot.js extension and see if it corresponds to one of my accounts on Ledger Live. Let me click on this account, click on the edit button right there, and then open advanced section. See, the address here matches with the address on the extension. Perfect. Now let's attach a second account to the extension. Um, for this, uh, observe closely, I'm going to change the account type to the next number in the sequence. So here is the address of the ledger account uh, attached. Now let's see if this matches with the second account I have on Ledger Live. There you go. Ledger creates new accounts by using these derivation paths. This topic is a little out of scope for this tutorial. There is a dedicated video and a wiki article to explain how this works. But anyways, so uh, just by changing the uh, account type uh, to the next number in the sequence, you can keep adding the accounts that you have in Ledger Live to the extension. Fine. Now that you know how to import accounts to Polkadot.js extension, let us make some transactions with them. Okay, so you can now treat these accounts like regular Polkadot.js accounts till the last step where you'll have to sign and submit the transactions, right? So you'll have to sign these transactions on your Ledger device. So this goes through a typical approval pipeline on Ledger, just be patient and, and read through everything and uh, make sure that it corresponds to what the UI is showing you. You know, that's the security the Ledger device offers. So it, it makes sure that everything presented to you on the UI 
matches with exactly what's happening with your account. This high levels of security sometimes cause the convenience of signing batch transactions. Uh, let me explain what these batch transactions are by demonstrating how to stake using you know, Ledger and Polkadot.js on Kusama network. To create or import the account on the Kusama app on your Ledger, you can follow the same procedure shown earlier in the tutorial. Um, you know, so I'm just going to open the Kusama app on the Ledger device, keep it in the ready state, and then click on that plus button right there. And there you go. So now uh, I have this uh, Kusama account. I'm gonna put some balance in it to demonstrate staking. All right, so let's see how to stake some KSM. Now let's go to the staking section on Polkadot.js. Now here, if I click on the nominate button right away, it will let you bond the tokens and pick the validators, uh, which are two different calls, right? So one, you're bonding the tokens, and next you're uh, picking the validators and, and the, uh, yeah. So if you look at the transaction that is going to be sent to the ledger for signing. So it, it's a batch transaction, meaning it, it's, it's a bunch of transactions put together and you know those are being sent to the ledger device for signing. So clearly the transaction fails. So for this to work, you have to send these transactions separately, individually to the ledger device. Uh, and let me show you how, how to do that especially for, for staking. There you have the stash button, so click on that. Uh, here is where you can like bond your tokens, right? So, so you can set a controller account, you can specify how, how many tokens you want to bond, etc. So if you're unfamiliar with the stash controller terminology in staking, so I would recommend you that you watch the staking video which is like a separate tutorial, there the concept of stash and controller accounts is explained in detail. Fine, so as you can see, this particular transaction is a single function call. You see right there, uh, which is what's going to be sent to the ledger for approval, so approve it. Now, after this is successful, your tokens are bonded. Now, the next step is nominating a bunch of validators, which I'm gonna do right here. Uh, let me cl click on the nominate button and then pick my you know, validators I'm gonna pick randomly here and I'll click on the nominate button and this sends uh, you know, uh, this transaction for appro approval on Ledger, so approve it. And now your tokens are, are ready to be staked. So let's see how to unborn these tokens, okay? So, so even this has to be done in two steps. First, you'll have to remove the nominations, you know, stop nominating. So I'm gonna click on that stop button right there, um, sign the transaction on the ledger, and now I've stopped like nominating my tokens. But the tokens are still bonded, right? So I need to unbond them. I'm gonna click on the unbond right there, and then sign the transaction on the ledger, and then done. So I'm done with staking. If you are a power user, then check out the developer tab right there and look at all the extrinsics uh, that, that can be executed with the Ledger device. Earlier I've shown a page with all the functionalities Ledger app can support. You can execute them if you'd like to through these extrinsics that you see right here. Hope this video was useful and if you have issues with, with any items in this tutorial or if you have further issues you'd like to discuss, the social channels are linked in the video description as well. Uh, take care.